Yes, yes, people, welcome to the Backbite Channel TV. I'm still here in Nottingham after last night's penalty shootout. Train not for another couple of hours, thought I'd have a little explore around Nottingham. First of all, nice to see that they've uh, given Harvey Bonds a statue down here. Lovely, lovely stuff. But I'll tell you what, I'm ready to come home now. I'm absolutely sick because I had a feeling there would be some transfer news today. Of course, you know, what with the deadline being tomorrow night. So I thought, you know, it is. I want to be stuck on a train and I'll be able to make a video about Mark E coming, about someone else coming, about a possible signing. Well, I was at no risk of that. I was just in danger of not being able to make this video. Complaining because it's not looking likely again that we are going to sign any players. So, as it stands, the current news at 2 pm on Thursday, right now that the transfer deadline closes at Friday, 11 pm tomorrow. Mark Gahey is off. It's, it's apparently off. It looks like Newcastle are set to walk away from the Gahey deal as a uh, Palace is not budging. Parish isn't budging. Who would have thought Steve Parish wasn't budging? Don't know how they didn't see that one coming. But Newcastle made the offer of 65 million plus 5 million in add on, so a 70 million total package for the Crystal Palace captain. Still not accepted. Keith and Sky Sports are saying that the deal still isn't completely dead in the water but he expects and various other reports before him saying that Newcastle are going to walk away from the deal because Palace just aren't accepting it listen fair play them I just, I'm more angry at Newcastle for this one if Palace want to keep their captain and don't want to accept 70 million for him move on we should have moved on weeks ago weeks ago we all we knew all along that Parish wanted 65 to 70 million now that we've about offered that he's obviously getting tight he's obviously thinking, actually now we don't want to accept it we don't want to lose him it doesn't help that one of their centre backs can't remember his name Got injured the other night, I think he's back. I'm not going to try and remember what it is, I don't care. One of their centre backs, anyway, has got injured in the Cup game. Obviously, they've lost uh, Anderson to Fulham, they're, they're replacing him, but they just don't want to sell Gahey. They've never ever wanted to sell Gahey, even though you know Gahey is apparently wanting to move. I really hope it's not windy here, but you know, it's really hard to find any spot in Nottingham to do a bloody video. We can't go into this season without saying anyone. That would be absolutely insane, to be honest with you. Absolutely mental. Um, but that's the case. Craig Hope saying that. Newcastle might not end up signing any centre back at all if and when the Gay deal falls through, which I find absolutely berserk, to be honest with you, like mental. Uh, considering obviously Shaw's spending for a couple of games, most importantly, the sellers and Botman are out still for a few months. All it takes is another one, and then we're not yet. Kraft is currently playing right centre back, doing a decent job, but how are man? If we want to win cups, we want to get top four, but you don't want to sign right centre backs. There's loads of other options out there. You tap sober as the other defenders across Europe. I don't understand why we haven't done this. I don't understand why we haven't. I kind of do a video anyway. People looking out through the windows. I mean, Jesus, what's going on? Top secret Nottingham service. I'll just have a walk down here. God almighty. Anyways, uh, I, I'd, be, I'd be devastated if we don't sign anyone. It would be terrible, terrible crack. It would be inexcusable, to be honest, and Mitchell would have a lot of answers. It's obviously seen that, you know. It was Eddie Howe's number one target, Mark Gahey, so he's trying to go all out for that. Um, and he's been adamant on that, and we've kept pursuing it, even though we know it looks like all along Palace didn't want to sell, even if you do reach that, that £70 million pound mark. You know, it looks like all along we knew that they were never going to accept that offer. And it's just a killer blow. It really, really is. We're going to walk away from that, it looks like, which I'm fine about if we could actually replace him. If we actually managed to sign someone else, another centre-back, that would be fine. But as it stands, with about 30 hours left of the window, we're not going to be saying anyone by the looks of it, and especially that centre back. We knew the right winger was a bit of a touch and go one, especially with the finances and stuff, but not even getting a right winger in on loan was this point. But now, it looks like we're not even going to get the main position of a right sided centre back. So, no signings really this summer that have strengthened our start 11. As it stands, we're just over a day left of the window, which is crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. Um, yeah, again, I've said all along, I reserve judgment until the window shuts, but it's looking very bleak at the moment. At the moment, it looks like the long old saga of Gahey's coming to a close with not a good outcome that I wanted of obviously him signing. Some people are saying it's fine, just walk away, it's a lot of money it is. We all were massively overpaying for him, but not getting anyone else in is even more worrying, to be fair. It really, really is. Uh, there was news last night before the Forest game that Fulham were preparing a bid for Miguel Almiron. That's been rebuffed today, that's been denied. Those uh, rumours seem to be untrue and Fulham are not going to go in for Amron. 
Maybe it's because Newcastle are holding over 15 million for him as well. So that's not the case. So it looks like Miggy is not going to be on the move. We obviously know he turned down the FC Charlotte deal and he doesn't want to go to Saudi Arabia. Premier League Fulham came in for him. I thought that would have been a nice move for him. But that doesn't look like it's going to be happening either. At the minute, man, people, it looks like now it's going to be happening. It's fucking depressing, man. It's a good job of won that cup game last night. Just about scraped through on pens. Make sure you check out the vlog and the reaction stuff you haven't seen already. But honestly, man, if we had lost that, because it's, it's all kicking off again now on Twitter, it's all doom and gloom. And it's real, man, because, you know, we've got big aspirations. You had our uh, me and man, Darren Eels, come out in the start of the summer saying it was going to be a transformative summer. I didn't realise sending 40 year old goalkeepers and, and rejects left, right, and centre was transformative. Honestly, um, I don't mind a couple of players have signed for squad depth. I really don't mind Lloyd Kelly, as soon as I give him a chance, stuff, young player, and all that. I'm just. I uh, angry at them, like, because we haven't had one player coming in and proves a start 11. Sound of Tonali, best thing I tapped in this window. Him last night, class. But it's not good enough, man. You need to strength from that defence. Shaw's aging, Shaw's suspended, everyone else is injured. What are we playing at? What are we playing at? Uh, so we change over the next 30 odd hours, but as it stands, everyone, it's not looking good. What is looking good, though, we'll finish off on some positive news. Congratulations. Tino Livermento, who's been called up to the England squad. Obviously, it's a stinky international break next week, and Lee Cosley, the interim manager, has uh, called up Tino, Gordon, and uh, who's the other one? Why well, have I forgot who else plays for England? Nick Pope as one of the goalkeepers, because no more Kieran Trippier playing for England. He has announced his retirement today. Fair play to Trippier, had a great national career. Couple of finals, couple of semi finals, uh, some huge goals, obviously, that Croatia one. Yeah. Bit of a legend for England especially, I think, you know, gave us some great memories. So with 54 caps, I think it was, something like that, he now retires. Uh, and will he be focusing on Newcastle or focusing elsewhere? We'll wait and see, he came in last night, started as captain, then gave it a Bruno, the armband, once he went off. He was quality last night, I thought, Trippier, yeah, really, really good. So I, I hope he stays now at this point, because what's the point in getting rid of him? You're not going to replace him, we're not going to sign anyone. Just fucking keep him, just, have to, just keep him. Um, but yeah, well done to Chino on that first call up for England I think that's about it people I think I've covered enough there Nottingham I'm going to go find one of many pubs around here to uh, have a painting because I've enjoyed a little painting of apparently the oldest inn in England this morning uh, this morning sound, sound like I've been smashing them in all day about half twelve uh, Yow Jerusalem so I'm not going to go back there though I'll go on, uh, somewhere else many pubs here in Nottingham I have enjoyed my time here I think it's been a nice city really good uh, but I am ready to go back to two now and cry all night long because we're not going to say anyone. So wait and see. Just watching everyone. Drop your thoughts below what you're making of this transfer news. Bad news. Black transfers. Yeah, again. Subscribe. See you in the next one.